Americans are least likely to care about kids having good manners. Here's what they prioritize instead. This is, again, a CNBC story. Uh, uh, in 2017, only 52% of adults in U.S. considered good manners as an important quality for children, a significant drop from 1990 when it was 76%. Rob, can you pull up this article from 76%? To 52%, according to a report by King's College London, this makes the U.S. the least likely country among 24 surveyed to prioritize good manners. In contrast, Egypt leads with 96%, considering good manners crucial, followed by Nigeria, 89%. Obedience is less valued in the U.S., with only 21% seeing it as important for kids. Nigeria tops the list at 58%. The report highlights that the importance of uh, obedience has declined in the Western countries since 90s, with the U.S. dropping from 39 to 21%. Besides good manners and obedience, the U.S. value hard work, 68%, independence, 56%, imagination, 30%, religious faith, 32% amongst children. However, tolerance and respect for others, 71%, are most commonly considered important, though the U.S. ranks 11th in this category. Tom, what are your thoughts on this? You can see it every day. Uh, the BizDoc Babe is a teacher, and we see it all the time. We've entered an era where it seems to be more important that your kids are happy and satiated, right? Keep them happy. Oh, why isn't he happy? And you see the stories of parents at the, you know, bribing a kid with ice cream to keep him from having the tantrum. You've seen it on airplanes. We've seen it in malls. We, and over the last 20 years, there's a new generation. It's about being ha happy and satiated. And it's because the parents are not worried about the manners and discipline. They're worried about keeping their kid happy. They're worried about satiating him. There's a word for this. It's called spoiled. The discipline that comes with it, kids that have rails, it's a fact that they are content. And there's a word for this, disciplined. They are, they are content and they're disciplined. They know their rails and they have happy little lives from that side of it. When parents don't care about their kids and, and you see the drop in what we think about good manners, they're not worried about the manners. They're worried about just keeping the kid quiet and bribing them and and they're spoiling kids. They're not building good citizens. And when you look at this list of things, it's exactly flipped from, you know, from the 80s. You know, I, I wasn't allowed to do tantrums. And my mom was not, you know, some horrible person. I was not permitted to do that. And by the way, if I threw a tantrum, somebody else's mom. Oh, wait, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. This is great. So I am six years old. I have now just started first grade. And we're in St. Louis, Missouri, a little town called Creve Coeur. And I take like two of my little comic books and I put them in this bag and I'm walking down the street and I'm like nine houses from where I live. This guy comes around the corner and I don't even remember the last name, but he rolls down the window and he says, Tommy, where are you going? And he says, I'm mad. I'm running away. He stops his car, gets out and stands up and says, go home. Cause he knew where I lived and he just yelled and pointed down the street. He didn't spank me. He didn't do anything like that, but he, he exerted parental authority. You know what I did? I turned around and walked back home. And as I'm turning around, he says, I'm calling your mom. She'll be ready when you're there. And so he's going to his house to call my mom. And so I didn't turn out terrible, but the point is now people are worried about, Oh, you know, you don't worry about manners. You worry about, oh, does he want to be a boy? Want to be a girl? Oh, the little boy wants to be a girl. Give me the dick saw. Here we go. <laughs> no. You know? Yeah. Well, he's dick right. saw. Yeah. Right. Dick, I, I don't know right what the all. name for the medical tool wow. is. I just made that up. I just think but it says a that's lot. That's what of, they use in Missouri. <clears throat> dick dick saw. Saw. I think it says a lot about Tom that even at that age, he's running away and he's like, I'm bringing reading and you know, material. <laughs> Tom's like, I'm, you know what? The hell with the underwear and shit. I'm bringing comic books. Well, I, 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 I was really. Six years old. I know. Brilliant. I really wanted to have this conversation. I really wanted to hit this topic because I think it's sort of indicative of where we're at in society. As a great as America is, of everything that we've done in our economy and the world and innovation and GDP and capitalism and free markets, you know, uh, we, we are the envy of the world. Nobody's trying to come to any other country other than America as the American dream. We talk about immigration, which is a, sh a shit show these days. But everyone wants to come to America. But when you get to America, you realize there's something kind of going on here that ain't right these days. Okay? And a lot of it has sort of been influenced by, the, by sort of what's going on in social media for sure, which has been good and bad for some reasons. You know, part of the, 
uh, one of the big things that I talk about on my show at the time is this Wall Street Journal we've talked about here it's, is that the, uh, the the Americans pulling back from the values that once defined us. So there's been, you know, patriotism is immensely on the decline. Having children is immensely on the decline and raising children. Obviously, that's a whole nother conversation. Religion's on the decline. Community involvement's on, on the decline. But what's up is money and looking out for yourself and selfishness and taking selfies for that matter. So what, what I love about America is personal responsibility and what we call rugged individualism, but also, and I don't necessarily believe in the collectivism, uh, socialism, but there is some sort of collective collectivism of, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. And I think what we need to bring back in America are ass whoopings. Because I agree 100%. It, it, it's so easy for any kid to go online and just talk shit with zero accountability. Did you see the latest interview that Tate did with the Aiden Ross kid and the kid that he brought on with him? Did yeah, you see this? That dork. Okay, that freaking dork in a SpongeBob outfit. He's so 15 dumb. years old talking shit yep. to Andrew Tate being like, I'll fucking kick your ass, bro. And Tate, so, like a G, is like, oh, really, bro? Uh, is that a SpongeBob shirt you're wearing? <laughs> As he's literally hitting his inhaler yeah, to breathe. So he's funny. like, yeah, I know how it is to breathe air these days. It, But the, the reality is this. Because of social media, you have these kids that blow up online that have never have to leave their house, face zero consequences, can talk shit online all day, as Drake says, uh, trigger fingers turn to Twitter fingers. You can act tough. And this kid right here, can we punch it on the, the kid in the green shirt? He, yeah, Look at up. this freaking dork just talking <laughs> what an, shit what an alpha. to Tate. Look at what this kid. Alpha. What an alpha. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll come over there and kick your ass. Yeah. Really, bro? Yeah. Okay? I, mean, I, think that's just for, I think that's for eyeballs, though. I don't think but that's, that's my point. Is that that kid is an influencer? He's like, is that a so a what's kid like point? that? So what's your so point? my point so like that what? is a kid like that yeah. in the real world yeah. when we were growing up yeah. in the eighties. If he talks shit like that in public to an yeah. Andrew Tate, he wouldn't be so walking right bring now. Back ass I'm saying what bring back ass whoopings. And and, and and just and, and Pat, I think the reason I, don't, I know Adam's not. No people are gonna be like, oh, Adam's saying beat your kids. No, no. As all of us did, no, I'm, there was, I'm there, was <laughs> there was consequences to your actions. Like Pat, if, you're, if our parents yeah. let you, don't 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 touch this, and you went when you, once you got that, you learned. It's almost like the Pavlov dog theory. You knew not to do that. It wasn't like I was bleeding or there was no fear. So now those kids, once now they realize, oh, they're not gonna. I could touch this and nothing's gonna happen. That's where you have kids now because the parents are disarmed. The parents they call the cops. On, on their parents now. Now a kid goes from, I could touch this, I could stay, I could do what I want. You know what? Mm -hmm. In school, they're telling me I could be a girl. I'm a girl. And the parent's like, okay, okay, John, there's no discipline. And you're right, Adam. I think they should, that we should have a national yeah. whoop your kid's ass day I, I, we're just not to let that. them know. I, I want to get, obviously get Pat's opinion as a parent. Let me just say one thing, disclaimer. I don't have kids. Uh, all my best friends have kids. I hang out with them every weekend. I'm around all these kids. I was a teacher for two years. I taught second grade. I taught seventh grade. Okay, I was a camp counselor. I've been around kids. And um, it, it, something is going on, especially because of social media. And bring, make America great again. Make ass whoopings a great again. I love it. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a standard issue, and I think parents are scared of their kids, and it makes no sense for me for parents to be scared of kids instead of kids being scared of parents. It's extremely confusing to see something like that taking place. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here, and if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.